Hello everyone, this is Michael Tarallo, Pre-Sales Director with Pentaho Corporation. This quick video clip is basically going to outline some advanced capability within the Pentaho Report Designer, version 3.5, the ability to create a dynamic SQL query. And we're going to do that by using an advanced custom JDBC data source and the message format component that is available inside Pentaho Report Designer. I've already started my Pentaho Report Designer. I'm using version 3.5 GA, or General Availability. And I'm going to create a new report and then add a data set. Under my Data tab and under Data Sets, I right click and you'll notice that we have JDBC, Metadata, Data Integration, OLAP. These are some of the methods of accessing data components, retrieving result sets, and then using them to drag and drop and create a pixel perfect operational enterprise type report. But you'll notice we also have some advanced data source connections. Uh, the one we're going to focus on today is JDBC Custom. What this is going to enable us to do is connect to the data source and then also create a dynamic SQL query that we could use and execute at runtime so we can do substitutable parameters for the actual query. Uh, where conditions, as names, and basically anything that could be written in a SQL query. Upon sel selecting JDBC Custom, I select the data source that I've configured already. In this case, I'm using uh, my sales data data source. And then I'm able to issue my query. So just to give you an example of how this works, we select Structure, our master report, and then you'll notice in the Attribute section of the master report, there is the Query section and name. What we're going to do here is select the plus icon under formula and then you can start using open live formula expressions to build the query but what I found a easier method to do so is to use the message format function. Select the message format function and then click the ellipsis button and then you'll have a dialog that has a message pattern and select the ellipsis button for that under value. Here you're presented with a blank dialog where you can then start using the query substitution syntax uh, in the format of a dollar sign, parentheses, parm name, parentheses. And when I mean parm name, that's the name that you define in your parameter section. Uh, before we jump into that, I just want to give you an example of how this is going to work with just a regular query. Um, when you do this method, uh, you need to know the columns that are coming back. So if the column name is plant, you need to make sure when you use your text field that you name that text field plant. Um, you could also use as names for your column names. Um, so to give you an example, what I'm going to do here is type in a query, select plant, and we'll say sum uh, line price from cord, and we'll group by plant. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is also give some of line price an as name. So we'll say as sales. And this will give you an example of how I use the column name. Okay, so we have select plant, some line price of sales from cord, group by plant. Okay, so there's no dynamics in this yet. I'm just going to show you how you could use this query first. So we'll click OK and close. You'll notice the formula name has a pencil. And then what we have to do now, you'll notice that you don't have any columns because it doesn't know the column names because it hasn't executed the result set like it does with the, um, the query when you specify it with the uh, original JDBC connection. So what you need to do is select your text field. Make sure it's the text field, the dollar $t, not the label. And then drag that to your details. And you're going to do this for whatever data type comes back. So plant is a text or a string, and sum of sales is a numeric or number field. So we'll pull those back. The next thing you're going to do is select your field, and under your structure, with the field selected, you're going to see the name of the particular field, the value, and the actual field. So here you can give it some name, um, it could be represented with some value, but for this area here, what we're going to do is specify the field, which is the name of the column coming back. In this case, um, you select it and you can type it in, so plant is the name of that field. And then for the number field, we're going to do the same thing. And if you remember, we named it sales with a capital S. OK, so now what we're going to do is preview. And you can see now we have our Boston, Dallas, LA, Orlando, Seattle, St. Louis, and the appropriate sum of sales for those plants. OK, so where it starts to get dynamic is when you're going to start using parameterization to substitute these type of parameters. So to give you an example, I have one uh, created already. 
uh, I call it my basic uh, guided ad hoc example. So this is actually beginnings of using basic guided ad hoc. Okay, so you can see I have a drop down list for the region, the plant, and I have my sales. And you can see here's region, here's plant. Some of the formatting's off because it was just a quick example. But if I wanted to sort this, let's say, by year and by store, I could update the report and you can now see we're sorting by year and store. Okay, so this is an example of building guided ad hoc within the uh, new report designer version 3.5. So let me give you an example now how that's achieved. So we're going to go back into our design mode. Okay, and there's a little trick um, when selecting parameters from the drop down list, and I want to show you that. So let's delete these fields, let's go to our data, and let's delete our data source. So we're starting fresh again. So the first thing you need to do is kind of scope out what you want to build and how it wants to be achieved. So what I want to do is create a, a drop down list that has some values in it that are going to be dynamic field names for me to sort this uh, report by. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is when utilizing this technique is create the parameter field list that we're going to use. In this, form, in this case, it's going to be the form of a drop down. So, and I'm going to populate that with a, a very simple table data source. So we'll right click on data, data sets, click table, click on query. We can give this a name. This is going to be called uh, table fields. Okay, and then here we can remove one of these columns because we're just going to, um, actually let's keep the column so I can give you an example of how the display value and, and the ID work. So I'm actually going to change the name of the header. I'm going to call this um, display name and then I'm going to call this the value so you can get an idea of that. And then for the display name we're going to call this the plant and then plant. And then here if you hover over you can add another row and we'll call this the region. And we can add in region. And then being that you're generating dynamic SQL syntax um, you can use the, uh, SQL dialect expressions. So I'll call this the year and then in here, I actually have a field called order date, and I'm going to use the MySQL function. In this case, I'm using MySQL, so my uh, year order date. Okay, so this is actually going to create the values that are going to populate the drop-down list I'm going to use. Okay, so once that is selected, um, then what we're able to do is then also add our data source. So the trick is, if you're going to add any type of fields from a table, um, from a dynamic query that's going to populate uh, a drop-down list, that needs to be specified first. And I believe that is uh, outlined in the documentation. So the next thing I'm going to do is add my advanced JDBC custom data source against my sales data. Okay. Then I want to define some parameters. So the parameters are going to be the sort values. So in this case, we're going to add a parameter, and the name of the parameter is going to be sort1. And the label will be select a sort. And then the type of this is just going to be a drop down. The query it's going to use is the table fields query, meaning it's going to grab those values from that table to populate in the drop down. And then you can see value and display name. Well, the value is going to be the value, and the display name is going to be display name. And this is going to be an object of type string. And we won't leave a default value, that's okay. Okay, so we've created our parameter. If you wanted to preview that, you can see there's our parameters. Okay, now obviously nothing will display yet because we haven't defined our query. So let's go back to our structure, back to our master report, go into our table fields, and edit that message format. Okay, so the message format is where we're going to edit this particular query and make it dynamic. Now I used order date and region which are coming from other tables so what I'm going to do here is um, just I have some syntax for join um, so it brings in those other tables so I'm just pasting those in there so this will give me access to those other fields such as region and order date. So we put that in there and then what we're going to do is change plant to a substitutable parameter using the dollar sign parentheses and the name of the, the value, in this case uh, the parameter value we named it was sort1. Okay, and then we're going to use an as name, right? So as sort, and then we're going to use that sort in the capital letters as the column name. 
So now that is going to be a dynamic group by. So here we have our group by plant. We have to change that as well to dollar sign, parentheses, sort one. Okay, or if you wanted to, you can say just group by sort. You can use the as name for the group by. Okay, click OK in that, close. Okay, so select your plant field and then name that sort, which is the as name. And now you're ready to test the, your report. So click on your preview. And from your drop down list, select the plant. Click update, and you can see now you have your sum of line price by plants. Select the region. Now you have the regions. And then if we did the SQL specific dialect for the MySQL, which was um, year order date, we now have the breakdown by years. Okay, so this is just the beginnings um, to that. Um, so I hope this was useful to you, and um, look for more uh, advanced tutorials. Uh, within the next coming weeks. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.